Rising from the shipyard with steel and power unmatched, the USS John F. Kennedy CVN-79 marks the dawn of a new era in American sea power. This is a bold step forward for American naval power, a reminder to any adversary that challenging the United States comes with serious consequences. Stretching 1,092 feet and displacing 100,000 tons, this next-generation carrier integrates more than 23 groundbreaking technologies, including advanced propulsion, enhanced power generation, streamlined ordnance handling, and cutting-edge aircraft launch systems. These innovations deliver a 33% boost in sortie generation while reducing costs compared to the Nimitz-class carriers, alongside life-cycle savings of roughly $4 billion per ship. With its state-of-the-art systems and advanced warfighting capabilities, the John F. Kennedy is set to reshape naval operations, providing the U.S. fleet with unmatched reach and strength. In today's era of renewed great power competition, CVN-79 emerges as the most agile and powerful combat platform on the seas. Designed to strengthen coordination within the carrier strike group and deepen cooperation with allied naval forces around the world. The CVN-79 is the second carrier of the Ford class, the Navy's first new carrier design in more than four decades. Bearing the name of America's 35th president, it pays tribute not only to his leadership in office, but also to his service in uniform as a Navy lieutenant during World War II. This is the second U.S. Navy carrier to honor President Kennedy, following USS John F. Kennedy CV-67, which served the fleet for more than half a century before its decommissioning in 2007. With CVN-79, the legacy of both the man and the ship continues, carrying forward a name associated with strength at sea, national service, and unwavering commitment to defending American interests around the globe. And I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. We choose to go to the moon. Apollo 11 lifted off to begin the lunar landing mission. Our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom. John F. Kennedy has been built from the keel up with design features that transform it into a true command platform at sea. Every system has been engineered to increase combat power, reduce manpower requirements, and enhance survivability in contested environments. One of the most critical advances is the advanced arresting gear, which replaces older recovery systems with a safer, more reliable design capable of handling both current and future generations of aircraft. This allows the Kennedy to recover everything from lightweight unmanned systems to heavy strike aircraft with greater precision and reduced wear on the airframe. The ship also integrates automation throughout its systems, which cuts crew requirements by several hundred sailors compared to the Nimitz class. This reduction not only lowers long-term operating costs, but also streamlines shipboard operations, allowing the crew to focus on mission execution. For layered defense, the carrier is equipped with the RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, a fast-reacting weapon designed to counter advanced anti-ship threats, including supersonic missiles and agile aircraft. This system enhances the carrier's survivability in high-threat environments. The aircraft carrier introduces the dual-band radar, combining the AN-SPY-3X band multifunction radar with the AN-SPY-4S band volume search radar. Starting with CVN-79, the AN-SPY-6 will replace the SPY-4, giving the ship unmatched detection, tracking, and engagement capabilities across the battle space. In place of traditional steam catapults, the Kennedy employs the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, EMALS, which delivers smoother, more controlled launches. EMALS reduces stress on aircraft, increases sortie rates, and provides the flexibility to launch both lighter unmanned systems and heavier strike platforms. 
powering these systems is the A1B nuclear reactor, a completely new design that provides greater electrical output than previous reactors. This surplus of power ensures the ship can meet the energy demands of current systems and adapt to future weapons such as directed energy systems and advanced sensors. To enhance survivability, Kennedy incorporates stealth features that reduce its radar cross-section, making it more difficult for adversaries to track and target in the open ocean. This design improvement contributes to the carrier's ability to operate with freedom in highly contested regions. Finally, Kennedy has the capacity to carry up to 90 aircraft, giving it unmatched flexibility in combat operations. Its air wing will include the FA-18EF Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, C-2 Greyhound, E-2 Hawkeye, F-35C, Lightning II, SH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and advanced unmanned systems. This powerful mix allows the ship to project air dominance, electronic warfare, airborne early warning, logistic support, and unmanned strike capabilities from a single mobile platform. One of the most visible changes setting the Ford class apart from earlier supercarriers is the placement of the island structure further aft. This adjustment improves flight deck efficiency, contributing to higher sortie generation rates while supporting the carrier's advanced launch and recovery systems. The class was designed with the goal of sustaining 160 sorties per day for over a month, with surge operations capable of reaching 270 per day. While some assessments, including those from Director of Operational Testing Michael Gilmore, suggest these projections may be ambitious, even maintaining rates comparable to the Nimitz class represents a formidable level of sustained combat power. The path to bringing John F. Kennedy to life was marked by milestones that reflect both industrial strength and national commitment. In January 2009, Huntington Ingalls Industries, then Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding, was awarded a $374 million contract for design and construction preparation. By September 2010, preparations were underway for full construction, and on 25th February 2011, the first cut of steel ceremony took place at Newport News, formally marking the start of Kennedy's build. Although originally planned for completion in 2018, the schedule shifted to 2020 after Secretary of Defense Robert Gates directed a transition to a five-year build cycle, ensuring the program would move forward on a more sustainable fiscal path. The ship's keel was laid on the 22nd of August 2015 in Newport News, Virginia. During the traditional keel-laying ceremony, ship sponsor Caroline Kennedy, daughter of President John F. Kennedy and sponsor of the earlier USS John F. Kennedy, CV-67, welded her initials into the hull, cementing both family and national legacy into the heart of the carrier. Today, the future USS John F. Kennedy is nearing 95% completion, yet its delivery path continues to be shaped by the integration of advanced systems unique to the Ford class. Among these are the advanced arresting gear and the advanced weapons elevators, both essential to sustaining the carrier's promised increases in sortie generation and ordnance handling efficiency. These systems represent a leap forward in carrier operations, but their complexity has demanded additional time to certify and refine. According to the Navy's fiscal year 2026 budget documents, Kennedy's projected delivery has been moved from July 2025 to March 2027. This adjustment allows the shipbuilder to complete certification of the AAG while ensuring the weapons elevators meet full operational standards before the carrier enters service. By shifting this work forward into construction rather than leaving it for post-delivery periods, the Navy aims to bring the ship online with fewer disruptions once commissioned. The challenges are not limited to technology alone. Huntington Ingalls Industries has had to contend with strained supply chains and shortages of skilled labor, issues that have slowed progress across the entire carrier program. In response, the shipyard has adjusted work schedules, offered new incentives, and continued recruiting specialized craftsmen to stabilize production. Despite these hurdles, the Navy has remained committed to the Kennedy's long-term value. 
accepting some non-essential tasks such as final paintwork. After delivery is under consideration if it helps keep the schedule intact. While delays have increased overall program costs, the focus remains on fielding a fully capable combat platform prepared for decades of service. Kennedy's extended timeline mirrors the experience of USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78, which required additional years to bring its full suite of technologies into operation. However, those hard lessons now serve to accelerate improvements across the class, ensuring that Kennedy and future carriers like Enterprise CVN-80 and Doris Miller CVN-81 enter the fleet stronger and more capable. When John F. Kennedy finally joins the fleet in 2027, it will not simply mark the arrival of another carrier, it will mark the next stage of America's maritime strategy. The ship's advanced systems, increased power generation, and expanded air wing capacity are designed to meet the demands of 21st century warfare, where contested seas, long-range strike requirements, and unmanned integration define the battle space. As great power competition intensifies, Kennedy will be a centerpiece of deterrence, power projection, and alliance reassurance. Operating as part of a carrier strike group, it will extend American reach across the world's oceans, provide unmatched air dominance, and integrate seamlessly with joint and allied forces. Delays and cost adjustments, while challenging, represent investments in a platform built to remain relevant for half a century or more. With its commissioning, Kennedy will carry forward a name tied to service and sacrifice while standing at the forefront of naval innovation and combat readiness. In doing so, it will secure America's ability to command the seas well into the mid-21st century and beyond.